Well, we are very, very excited about what God did in Uganda, but we're very excited to be back home as well. Um, it was, uh, it, you know, I went, I went in November, this past November, and stayed uh, with, with a few of our church members. We accompanied another group, and, and it was a blast, and I was ready to stay more than twice as long this time, and it took about three times the energy to stay stayed that long and so I, I, I know I know the whole team we've been recuperating all week and trying to catch up on sleep and all that but uh, we, we I can honestly say that that the team went and gave everything that they had um, you know I my, my my prayer going was that we would come back totally drained spiritually that we would leave everything that we had and I believe with all my heart we did that I preached I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say real quick and then I'm gonna let one of them go and then I'm going to come and finish her up. But um, I preached. We, we ministered for 13 days. Um, we, we served 18,000 meals while we were gone. Uh, we, we, as a body, raised enough money to, to, to serve 18,000 meals. Uh, and, and I've got some videos, and I don't think we're going to show them today, but, but where there would be lines as long as you could see people lining up and getting a plate of food. And, and, I mean, they would sit there all day so that they could have a plate of food. And, you know, we, we tried to model what Jesus did. Jesus always met their physical need, and then he met their spiritual need. So every time they'd come to service, we'd feed them a physical meal and, and let God do his work in the middle of it. But we ministered for 13 days, uh, 13 days of services. I preached 23 times in 13 days. And, uh, and somehow, by the grace of God, I had a voice when we were done every day. And, uh, and, and we went uh, the, the Saturday or the Friday, our last day ministering, I, I preached in the morning service. And I just really felt led. I'd preached crusade every night. Like Pastor said, it was two hours every night of, of just as hard as you could go. And, um, and, and that last night or that last afternoon, I felt led just in my spirit to, to ask Jonathan to preach the crusade. And I mean, I just felt absolutely, totally drained on that last service I preached. And Jonathan did a great job and, and preached the crusade. But we were in five different cities. Um, we had a youth conference. We had 380 youth in that conference. Uh, April was, was privileged to speak at a ladies' conference. And so that's the highlights of what we did. I, I, I'm going to come and share a few little stories at the end, some, some specific testimonies. But I want April to come and share and testify and preach and but I, I'm gonna tell you we, we told this story while we were there and 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 many of you know April and you know how quiet she is and and, and if you haven't seen yet it's a different April than than three weeks ago when she left home I mean she'd get up and go as hard as she could and 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 the people would would follow right behind her so I was proud of I was proud of her proud of Jonathan and uh, we we've we've the three of us have developed a great friendship over these these two weeks when you when you're together from 8 a.m. till 1 a.m. the next morning, and and you're tired, and you see you see each other sweating and snot flying and crying and and all that, it it it, it gets personal. So uh, we we had a great trip. Amen. I'm gonna act like I'm in Uganda when we when you get up and say Hallelujah. <laughs> Amina. That's what you don't say Hallelujah back. You say Amina. <laughs> hallelujah. Amina, yes. I didn't bring any pictures with me today. Oh, I have a word from the Lord for my family at Fort Payne Church of God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> if you want to see pictures, you just go to my Facebook. I put every, just about every picture I took is on my Facebook so you can see. I want to tell you. First of all, before we left, the Wednesday night before we left, there was a word from the Lord that, that he gave Gina to give to the team, and I'm going to read what the word of the Lord was. The night before we left, it said, I'm going to change the way you view ministry. I'm going to give you a new way of understanding my ways. You're going to see greater things because the greater one is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. When I say do something, trust in my voice. You know it clearly. Oh, hallelujah. trust in me, not yourself. 
and I'm going to show you demonstrations of my power and glory and bring you to a new place of ministry. Oh, that's exactly what he did. Hallelujah. I wrote down some things that I learned in my time of Uganda. And I, ever since I was there and ever since I've been home, I've been praying. I've been praying so hard. Even though you people didn't get to go to Uganda in the physical, I'm praying, oh, that that same power and that same anointing and that same conviction, you can experience that in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'm praying that. I'm believing that in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Number one, I learned that Ugandans, they know how to show honor. Oh, the first service that, I, that we went... Pastor and Jonathan rode separate, and, and Pastor Matthew and I, we rode in a different vehicle. We came later. And when we pulled up to that church, there was probably 50 or 60 people lined up in the front of that church. And they were singing, and they were welcoming us. They were welcoming us. We got out of the car. They wouldn't let us carry anything. They took our Bibles. They took our bags. And they, they, these little children, they got down on the ground, and they were hugging my legs. And they were just trying so hard to shake our hands and tell us how much they loved us. They took our stuff. They marched us right up to the very best seats in the house. They had bottles of water waiting on us understand those people have to walk all the way to the well to get some water and it's in these dirty old jugs and they had us bottles of water waiting on us and I sat down in my seat and I looked and, and all over the front of the church were these babies and they were so dirty and they didn't have good clothes they were all torn up and they were so well behaved they didn't make a peep now, there was a woman with a switch ready to, <laughs> to make them up. <laughs> but that's wonderful that those children know how to reverence the house of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And when I sat down and they were singing the most awesome, beautiful music and dancing with all their might, I, I have never sobbed, I don't think, so hard in my entire life. I could not get it together. I was crying so hard. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I know them people were looking at me like I was insane. But it just, oh, it was just overwhelming. And I finally kind of kind of could get it where I went <gasps> like that. And I looked over at Jonathan and he said, it's okay, I did the same thing. <laughs> But those people know how to show honor. Number two, I learned, first of all, I want to say, I love you guys so much. I love you. Y'all are my family. Oh, and I want the best for my family. And this is hard for me to say, but I'm going to say it anyway because God told me to and because it's going to change your life. Hey, Americans are spoiled rotten. We are spoiled rotten. Oh, God, help us. Oh, those people didn't have anything. I'm telling you, they didn't hardly even have clothes. They didn't have water except from the well. They were, they were starving to death. But they were the most thankful, most joy-filled people I have ever been around in my life. Oh, God. Their church, and the, the, the first church we went to wasn't, compared to all the rest of the churches that we went to, was an awesome church. And it was just, it, it was just bricks. And it had a dirt floor. It didn't have power. The pastor of that church don't even have a car to drive. And that man hauls a generator, and he hauls a sound equipment with him every single time he goes in a taxi. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> There's people, they don't, <laughs> they walk miles to church. Oh, because it's a privilege to come to church. They walk for miles. They're hungry for God. We didn't eat lunch a lot of times. I'm talking lunch till like 5 o'clock at night. 
and they would say, hey, we, lunch is ready, lunch is ready, all hungry. And they say, more preaching, more preaching. Lord, help us. God, help us. We have such awesome cars to drive. <laughs> Air conditioning. Look at this building that God blessed us with. Oh, it's awesome. If Ugandans came and saw this church, they wouldn't know what to do. It's so nice. And yet we come, <laughs> if we come to church, oh, hey, we got cars. Oh, we got the best of the best. We serve the same God that they do. Hey, what's wrong with us? God help us. We got people with cars in their driveway and they're sitting at home while church is going, watching TV. Oh, God help us. It's a privilege to come into this house. It's a privilege. Oh, God. The pastor... We were go like Matthew said, we were going nonstop as hard as we could. I have never I have never reached that point of exhaustion in all my in all my days. But I tell you <laughs> where we are where we are weak, <laughs> God is strong. And he showed himself so mighty to me. Hallelujah. So I was asking Edgar, Pastor Edgar, he was the church of Elevate, the church we built, and his wife, and I said, I said, what are y'all going to do when we're gone home? I said, you'll have so much free time, you won't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> and she said, she said, right when, when y'all leave, we're going back to the church, and we've got to fast for the whole week because there's so many new converts. We've got to fast for them. <laughs> and they live, how long did they live away from the church? An hour drive from the church. These people live the pastor of the church, and they were going to stay at the church that week. Right now, they're at their church. They've stayed all week. There is no electricity. There are no showers. There are no bathrooms. They are there at that church fasting and praying for the new converts. Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they fast for their church and their city. Oh, he is changing that place. Chupalore is for Christ. Hallelujah. We declared it. And the last week of every month, they fast the whole week. They stay at the church, fast the whole week. God, help us. God, help us. No wonder we're seeing what we're seeing. Because we're not fasting and praying like we ought to be fasting and praying. Oh, if we do it right, there's no telling what we're going to see. Oh, Four Paint Church of God, I love you. I love you. Don't you want to see? Don't you want to see the miracles of God? Oh, don't you want to see people coming in and getting delivered and getting saved? It comes with a price. Oh, it comes with a price. I learned that the devil and demons are real. I already thought I knew that, but they are real. I'm going to tell you, they are real. They are clever. They are very persistent. They don't give up. <laughs> oh, they want to steal, kill, and destroy. They want to make you afraid. They want to put so much fear in you because, oh, they don't want you to know who you are in Christ. Hey, I have never... Oh, when I was a little girl, only one time in my life I was a little girl, and we were at the old church that burned, and there was a lady that walked in off the street during the, right there in the middle of preaching. I don't know if y'all remember this, but she was demon-possessed, and this woman got delivered and set free. And I, I was a little kid, and I remembered it scared me half to death. <laughs> That's the only, that's the only thing that I, I can recall I've ever been around in the seeing people get delivered. Until Uganda. <laughs> and I tell you, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. I thought I was prepared. Oh, but I wasn't as prepared as I needed to be. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. I wish I could stand up here and say I was super Christian and I was like, oh, I was ready. But I'm telling you, there in the Crusades that first night, 
it, I'm telling you, it was evil. It was an evil place. We were in crusades, and people would, pastors would go out. And I'm telling you, first of all, they would give an altar call for people to come to Jesus. And they would come running. <laughs> they would come running to get Jesus. And it was full of people coming to get Jesus. And pastors would go out and just start praying for people. And all of a sudden, these demons were manifesting. I'm talking rough stuff. Rough, evil stuff. They picked up these people over their heads and put them on the stage for all to see. And there we were on the stage. My first time to cast out a demon. And I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, I, was just, you, I mean, you talk about... Uh, being thrown into the fire, so to speak. I want to say that I was super spiritual and it was awesome, but I'm telling you the truth, it was, it was a battle for me. That The devil wanted so hard to convince me that I was inadequate for the task at hand. He tried his best. Oh, mercy, he tried his best. I don't want to tell Matthew's story, but I want to real bad, but I'm not going to. But the, <laughs> there was, <laughs> there was a, a, the second night we were there. An incident occurred that Matthew will tell you about, which was awesome, and it stirred up something in the demonic. And that night, there was probably, how many would you say, 60, 60 folks, <laughs> they were piling those demon-possessed people up on that stage like crazy. You, you couldn't even you couldn't even step on the stage without stepping on people. They were, I was, I, I was kind of like, Praying for these two people over here, casting them, doing the best that I knew how to do to cast these demons out. And I just happened to look, and this one lady was right in front of me, facing me. She was laying on her back, flat, still. <sighs> so I was praying for these two people, and right when I looked up, this woman, it was just like a horror movie. She sat straight up and was going right from my throat to choke me. I'm telling you, the devil wants to make you fearful. I was battling. That very night, I went back to my room. And I was like, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I know what the devil's telling me, but I know he's a liar, but you're going to have to help me now. And the power, we didn't really have electricity all that much, even in our hotel room. It just kind of go off and on any time. So I was laying in bed, and I was crying and praying, and the power went off, and I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, a demon... Y'all think I'm crazy if you want, but a demon was staring me right in the eyes. Those two eyes looking me right in the face. And I oh, Jesus, <laughs> you know, oh, just, you talking about warfare. I've never faced such in my life. We went on to the next city and conference. I was still battling. And all along, the Lord was helping me. He was helping me. Giving, he was strengthening me every time. Every time I went, every service, he was giving me strength. Well, we went to this conference, and I tell you, the power of God was moving like you've never seen. Oh, it was so powerful. Pastor Matthew preached. People were getting free in the Holy Ghost. I had never been free in the Holy Ghost before. That was the only time I got to go play the keyboard in Uganda, and it was about this big. <laughs> and it took a little while to get used to it, but it was awesome. Oh, my goodness, it was so powerful. You just had to be there. Well, when I got back to my seat... There was a bracelet in my seat, and I just, I just picked it up and put it on the armrest, and I was just standing up, had both my arms raised, and I was praying and thanking the Lord for, for an awesome service. And when I had my hands up, I felt this bracelet just slap on my arm. And I, and I looked, and there was this little woman standing right in front of me, and she was smiling, and I said, oh, she gave me the bracelet. So I hugged this lady. I'm going to tell her thank you for the bracelet. When I hugged this lady, she bit me so hard. This lady was demon-possessed. She bit my arm. It didn't bleed. Don't worry. But it did hurt. <laughs> it did hurt bad. I grabbed her hand. I said, in the name of Jesus, oh, how dare the devil bite me. And I'm going to tell you, the devil wants to do so much more to you. Oh, he wants to do so much more to you. But from that moment on, that very night, I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I realize who I am in Christ. Hey, hallelujah. It's not me. It's not by mind. It's not by power. But it's by the Spirit. 
inside of me. And let me tell you, if you are saved and you made a covenant with Jesus Christ, that same power is in you. Hey, the devil don't want you to know it. He don't want you to know it. Hallelujah. So crusade came that night. All the other times I stood close to my brothers. And because I, I'm telling you, it was rough. It was rough. I stood close to him, but I said, this night, it's just you and me, Jesus. It's just you and me. You are going to show yourself strong to me tonight. So I left my, my comfort zone of my strong brothers, and I went in the crowd myself. And lo and behold, the first woman that I laid my hands on, she started just convulsing and this, this sound coming out of her, this ungodly evil sound came out of this woman <laughs> and I said in the name of Jesus Christ the name that is above all names I cast you out in Jesus name and that woman hit the floor she was just freely and I said you are powerless in Jesus name you come out come out in Jesus name hallelujah that woman started coughing up that stuff she started spitting up all that junk she was delivered and she was set free hallelujah Hallelujah! She was saved. She gave her heart to God. Hallelujah! And I'm so thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful that God showed Himself mighty to me. Hallelujah! It's not about what you feel, because I'm going to tell you, the devil is a liar. Oh, and he wants you to feel afraid constantly. But if you can just you see, it wouldn't. It, Jonathan told me such an awesome thing. He said, there's nothing I can do to operate in more authority. All authority is already given to me. <laughs> All authority is already given to you. Every bit of it you will ever need is there. Hallelujah. <laughs> We have the power through Jesus Christ over the enemy. Oh, he may try to come against you, but he is a defeated foe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just as I saw that the devil is real and demons are real, I just thought I knew how powerful my God was. I just thought I knew until I went to Uganda. Oh, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Mm. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm going to ask you a question. What do you believe? Mm, what do you believe? Are you letting the devil rob you of the God-given authority that he has given you? Because of doubt... Because of fear, it's time to shake that mess off. Oh, it's time to shake that mess off. You are more than conquerors through Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I learned. Oh, God. Lord knows my heart, and I don't say this to, to pump me up by any means. Lord knows. But if y'all could have known me when I was a little girl. I was so shy. <laughs> we would go to get something to drink, to eat at a, a fast food restaurant at Chick-fil-A. And I'd be so thirsty. And you know you have to go up and ask for a refill. I'd be so thirsty. I couldn't even stand it. But I would not go ask for a refill. I was that shy. Mama can vouch for me. I would not. <laughs> if you was to get me in front of a crowd to talk, I would pass out. I could not do it. <laughs> <laughs> when I married or when I met Shailen, he was a missionary. And I said, Ooh, I'll never be a missionary. <laughs> that is so far beyond me. I'll never do that. <laughs> I'm so thankful I married Shailen. 
Oh, I'm so thankful for the work God is doing in me. I'm telling you people, he wants to use you. He wants to do mighty things through you. He wants to transform you into powerful armies of God. Hallelujah. Why are you sitting back on your seats? Why? Oh, God, I'm not a super Christian. I ain't got this thing figured out. But I, one thing I know is I'm desperate to do the will of my Father. Oh, I'm desperate to do the will of my Father. And I will die trying. Hallelujah. And I know part of my purpose. I got to speak in front of a, a, a ladies conference. Oh, and the Lord woke me up that morning. <laughs> And I was putting on my mama's shirt. <laughs> I was putting on my mama's shirt. I took with me. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I was putting on that shirt. He said that same mantle. Oh, that was on my mama. is passing down to me. But greater things shall I see than my mother. Oh, hallelujah. I was standing up getting ready to speak to those ladies. And God showed me. That I was born on May the 5th of 1981. The main reason I was born on that day was to stand up in front of those ladies that morning. Oh! And tell them the same thing I'm telling you. Oh, it's time to get off of your seat and start doing something for God. Oh! If God can take this little shy girl that couldn't do nothing without collapsing and turn her, look what I'm doing. But it's because of God. It's not me. Oh, it's not me. It's God. What can he do with you? What can he do with you guys? Y'all are so much more talented than I am. But I tell you, little as much when God is in it. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, the last thing he taught me. We are running out of time. Romans 13, 11. And do this, knowing the time, that now, 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 today, oh, it is high time to awake out of sleep. Mm, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. We are running out of time. Oh, we're running out of time. Jesus is coming back in case you didn't know. All the signs are pointing to his return any second. We have so many people. There's so many people to reach in Uganda. It's not even funny. I'm actually planning on going back. There's another humongous ladies conference in January. And I'm praying the Lord to provide a way because he's already birthed something in me to share to those people. I'm going back to Uganda. Whenever the Lord's ready, I'm going. I'm sitting on go. I'm just waiting on him. Hey, but you know what? As many people as they're in Uganda to reach, there are the same amount of people in Fort Payne, Alabama. Oh, the time is now to awake out of sleep, you people. <laughs> it's time to do more than we ever have in our lives. Do you all understand that with God we can do this? Do you understand that? We already have the victory. We already have the message that will transform people's lives. We know it. Why aren't we telling people? Why aren't we? Oh, God. Those are the things that I learned. And I just want to tell you again, I love you so much. And I'm praying every day that this what the Lord showed us and the conviction, oh my goodness, I've never cried so much in my entire life. Every bit of that that we felt is transferred into you people. That y'all would get the vision, that y'all would feel the urgency of the hour. It's time. Now is the time. Oh, God bless you.